This is a hard video to make. Today's Nintendo forecast focuses on a company that has produced my first and second favourite games of all time, and then proceeded to mulch around in mediocrity for decades. It's about the fall of a truly great programming team, and perhaps the thin, distant hope of redemption in its future. This is a video about Camelot software planning. Nowadays, people probably know Camelot as the company that puts out functional but fairly uninspired Mario Tennis and Mario Golf games. They've also worked on Mario Sports Superstars on 3DS, but the section they worked on, you guessed it, tennis and golf. And look, I've got nothing against these games. I like Tennis Aces and Super Rush well enough, and I've enjoyed going back and puttering around with old sports titles on the N64 on Nintendo Switch Online. But Camelot once stood for something more. If not for sports titles, Nintendo fans may remember Camelot for their time developing Golden Sun. With two hit titles on Game Boy Advance in the early 2000s, Golden Sun gained a strong cult following and mustered a slightly disappointing DS sequel which garnered sufficiently anemic sales that the franchise was quietly retired after that. For a long time I thought there was an at least fair chance that Golden Sun could receive the remake treatment on Switch, after all, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot was a lovely surprise, and Golden Sun seemed like another game which would really benefit from this treatment. But a nail was wedged into the coffin and garlic strung around the gravesite when, in February 2023, Nintendo announced that Golden Sun was coming to NSO. I just don't think Golden Sun is a strong enough title to compete with itself in a competitive environment. But Camelot has a deeper history still, and this is where I first grew to love them, and where their superhero developer origin story takes its tragic turn, propelling them towards more mushroom-minded matters into the 2000s. You see, before they zoomed down the warp pipe into Super Mario World, they created and shepherded the absolutely amazing Shining games on the Sega system. And far from the cautious, timid producers that we've seen in recent years reliably churning out golf and tennis alternately like a Mario sports-themed metronome, they really experimented. The Shining Force games were tactics RPGs infused with a good amount of Dragon Force's exploration and brio. Shining in the Darkness and Shining the Holy Ark were old-fashioned dungeon crawlers, which, at the time, felt graphically quite amazing. The Shining Force Gaiden games were cut down versions of Shining Force and they even did a Zelda clone in the underrated Shining Wisdom. Not all these games were perfect, but they churned them out at a prodigious rate and many were excellent. Shining Force 2 was the game of my childhood. If you play it on an SO, I still think it holds up as an excellent title, but I do appreciate that it now feels dated. But honestly, Shining Force 2 is that game, for me, that defines my childhood. However, Shining Force 3 is truly, even today, a thing of beauty and it feels so unfair that people are robbed of playing it now. But Shining Force 3 always had a tough task, releasing at the end of the lifespan of the now obscure Sega Saturn system, a console that was deeply flawed but also is home to perhaps more underappreciated gems than any other retro console. Moreover, this was a three-part title, with each part of the Shining Force 3 story seeing the same action from different perspectives, creating a vast and complex epic. If you liked Fire Emblem Three Houses, Shining Force 3 did the same thing in a far more interesting and ambitious way over two decades prior. But only the first part of Shining Force 3 was ever translated, and while the last two games were pushed out in Japan, Camelot's patience with Sega finally snapped. They had never been given the credit they deserved by Sega. They had to fight to fill every last kilobyte of data on Shining Force 2 instead of being allowed to use a cartridge with more memory. They were never remunerated as well as other studios, and now their masterwork game was treated poorly. Now, latterly, the wonderful people at Shining Force Central created a translation patch so that if you can track down a Sega Saturn and all three original titles, you can still play the greatest RPG of all time that nobody knows about. But... Sega went in a different direction with the Shining series, and they reached some success in Japan, but they never managed any kind of critical or sales success in the West, while Nintendo saw Camelot's passion and skill and gave them the shot to work on Golden Sun. If you like Golden Sun, if you love Golden Sun, you should know that it is spiritually a Shining Force game, from the name, to the font, to the multiple perspectives, to the Shining the Holy Ark style gin system, it is in every sense a continuation of the themes and ideas that Camelot started when they were working at Sega. But 
this is all ancient history now. That passion and spark seem long dead. Can a company that was once so wonderful now find its way back to redemption? Let's look at the possibilities and let's first consider is it even the same company? Camelot is not an enormously big group of people and comparing the credits of Shining Force 3 from 1998 and Mario Golf Super Rush from 2021, there is still a pleasing number of people still at the company as per this list on screen. By the way, while you're perusing this list, please do drop this video a quick like, I really do appreciate it. Of particular note here is Shining Force co-creator Hiroyuki Takahashi. And even though he didn't work on Shining Force 3, you can add to this list Hiroyuki's little brother Shugo. He did work on Shining Force 2 and Shining Force Gaiden and has been a mainstay at the company during the Nintendo years. Now, the danger is that many of these people are now approaching retirement. The window for them to rediscover something greater than golf and tennis evergreen games is rapidly fading. If you're in the camp that hope for something greater from Camelot though, time may be on our side. On current track, we'd expect Camelot to serve us up another Mario Tennis title in the summer of 2024. That fits the three year cycle we've had in recent years, but even if a new system is out by then, would Nintendo really want Mario Tennis in its one year launch window? They could always put the game on ice and release it later, save it for the difficult second year. That's a very Nintendo thing to do, and if I'm honest, the option I find most likely. It feels like Camelot has been down the rabbit hole of Mario Tennis and Mario Golf too long to turn back now. So I'm going to put the odds at 70% that Mario Tennis is Camelot's next title, but let's just tantalise ourselves with what the alternative options could be. The next most likely option is something like Golden Sun. A remake now out of the question, would Golden Sun's reappearance on NSO presage a new title? Camelot isn't a first party Nintendo studio, but they have worked with Nintendo so long and Nintendo is in a mood recently with the success of the Switch to revive even obscure franchises from Advance Wars to Famicom Detective Club. I could absolutely see them pushing a Golden Sun game and I could see the Takahashi brothers preferring to take on a new game over a remake. In particular, if they're approaching retirement, they might see this as a swan song title for them. After all, Mario Tennis could wait easily until 2027 as there's a huge well of Mario games that could keep the plumber going in the meantime and I really don't think anyone is exactly clamouring for a new title in the tennis series after the fairly high selling Tennis Aces. A slightly longer fallow period would probably do Mario Tennis nothing but good. I would say the odds of a new Golden Sun game from Camelot are low but far from impossible. If and only if Camelot's next title isn't a Mario sports game I would say there's a 90% chance it will be Golden Sun. But, you know, personally, Golden Sun is great, but there's only one title I really want, and that is Shining Force. Be it a remake of Shining Force 3 so people can truly appreciate the wonder of this game and I can play it on my favourite hybrid system, or even Shining Force 4. Tactics games have had a revival on Switch and I've enjoyed Fire Emblem, Triangle Strategy and Mariposa Ravage well enough, but Shining Force's mix of exploration, Dragon Quest style, bright epic storylines and tactics action has still to be matched or even really emulated. For this to happen, a quarter century feud with Sega would need to end. However, the Shining series has hit a bit of a roadblock for Sega. After years of Sega ploughing their own field by commissioning Shining titles, even Shining Force titles that bore no resemblance to Camelot's output of the 90s, they recently acknowledged the Camelot titles by announcing a mobile gacha title using many of the characters from Shining Forces 1, 2 and 3, and then promptly cancelling it. Still, this tiny pilot light of hope suggests that perhaps Sega realised that the original Shining games, now more accessible than ever due to their appearance on NSO, have some value to them, and if they were to make Camelot an offer that respected their creative integrity, perhaps something could emerge. We're talking a fraction of a fraction of a chance here. Odds so tiny I'm not even going to bother giving them. And one final option which could be controversial on so many levels is that they decide to use Golden Sun as a way to do a new type of tactics game in the Golden Shining format. This could be something that really frustrates traditional Golden Sun fans as if they're not in it for the story but the gameplay, the gameplay of a tactics game would be quite different. However, I can also imagine that Nintendo would like the idea of trying to revive but change a franchise before, and back in the days of the Shining games, 
Camelot constantly changed the format of the games to keep things fresh. Is it possible that they could do this? Yes, it's possible. Is it likely? I think we are well into the territory of extremely unlikely. We're talking about fractions of fractions of chances here. Odds so tiny, I'm not even going to bother giving them. I realise many viewers won't have even been born when Shining Force 3 released and may be more interested in more golden tinged RPG themes. But when you love a game series as much as I love Shining Force, you take comfort from even the faintest glimmer of light shining in the darkness.